My guest today is Stephen Rose. Stephen, how are you? I am excellent, David. How are you today? I'm doing really well. I'm uh, here in sunny Chicago, which is in Illinois, which, as you know, is the sunshine state. Oh, yeah. It is It is my uh, hometown. Uh, I grew awesome. up in the suburbs of Chicago. I live downtown. As a matter of fact, I used to live a half a block from Wrigley Field at 3744 North Sheffield Avenue for many, many years. Awesome. I think I've seen the plaque there. Uh, there should be considering, uh, I had a garden apartment, which is for those not familiar with that actually means it's below ground and mm. your windows are up near the ceiling I've where the outside bushes are. And, uh, I was living there right when Wrigley started doing night games, uh, which Ooh, was bad when you had a lot of people who had too much, yeah, too much beer and yeah. couldn't find a restroom. Uh, I'd often be yelling at people like, Hey, that's my bushes. And somebody lives here. And <laughs> while looking up. Well, you escaped the right time. Now they have rock concerts there in the summertime. Yes, exactly. So, no, but I miss it. It was great to see you while I was there and Dan Ray and go to Portillo's and get a good beef sausage sandwich dipped with peppers that made me happy. So uh, <laughs> it was great getting back. Very cool. I'm not from Chicago, but I got here as fast as I could. Good man. Um, so what do you do now? What's What do you do for a living? Uh, I am a, a senior product marketing manager for Microsoft Teams. I've been at Microsoft for almost 14 years now, and uh, I'm also the host of a show called Inside Microsoft Teams that folks can find at aka.ms slash inside MS Teams. And we talk about Microsoft Teams with a variety of IT pros and customers, and it's really around best practices, what folks have learned, deep dives on security, things like that. So that is very much the core of my existence right now very cool I, I watched that show a couple times after speaking with you it's pretty good and Thank i will you. put a um that's oh, very good actually <laughs> and uh, i don't mean to damn with faint praise pretty good is good very good <laughs> is even better so i, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh and i will put a link to that show in my show notes here uh awesome uh, and you, uh, there's a lot going on with teams right now in fact uh, yeah. uh there's always a lot going on with teams one of those those products that just uh, the, the people that are building it are always going and fast 450 updates since last Ignite, and our most recent Ignite was last week. So mm -hmm. since Ignite, I guess we'd now have to say since Ignite 2021, we've had 450 updates to Teams, and that's a lot. That is a lot. What's uh, Tell me about the, the big announcements last week at Ignite. What's, what's really cool? Um, I like to balance things between uh, what I call evolution and revolution. Evolution are features that people expect or need or have asked for, or that is a natural evolution from something we already released. And revolution are things that folks don't expect. So in the evolution, um, we're bringing Teams chats to Outlook. We're going to support pop out inside of Teams channels. We have it for uh, you know, for individual chats, but we haven't had it for that. Um, there's a lot of cool new stuff we're doing in something called Channels 2.0, which will now move the announcement box up to the top, things like that. And even something that I think is really smart called a schedule send, where like in Outlook, you can say, hey, this person is in Europe, so I don't want them answering emails at 10 o'clock at night. I'm going to send it to go out at 8 o'clock their time. You can now do that with Teams chats. You can actually schedule oh. them to hit at different times, which is great. But under the evolutionary, um, you know, it's all that stuff. And there was other things that we announced. But under the revolutionary, we announced a new Teams add-on called Teams Premium. So uh, this is above and beyond E3 or E5. This is a totally separate set of services that mm -hmm. we announced that will be coming next year. Uh, next spring that customers can uh, pay for and get some great stuff around personalization, intelligence, and security. Tell me about that. What's uh, Tell me about the personalization features of Teams Premium. Okay. So we'll start with personalization. So personalization is great if you are someone who does uh, a lot of meeting. So this will allow you to do things like be able to customize the GUI for Teams, be able to add your company logos when you're creating the registration pages, just ways uh, where you can do your own custom backgrounds and, and custom setups where, you know, we have it where you look like you can be sitting in chairs. You can actually create whole classrooms and things like that. Hmm. So um, we're doing that to make it more personalized, which is great. The big thing, though, I think is really around intelligence and security. So for intelligence, 
if you record a Teams meeting using transcription, you can uh, afterwards go into the recording, type in your name or type in a term, and it will take you right to that moment in the meeting. And you could hit that several times, catch all the times maybe your name was mentioned and be able to see that. Well, with new intelligent meetings, what this is going to do is it's going to send you a meeting summary after the meeting. Wow. This is not only going to include all the times that you were mentioned or the project you were mentioned, but if people assign an action item to you, it will automatically do it. So wow. after the meeting, you're going to get the recording. You're going to get all of the notes. You're going to get all of this and action items and doable things that you're going to be able to do without even having to go back into that meeting and look for it. So if you had three meetings scheduled at the same time, and you only were only able to do one, you'll be able to get caught up on those other two rather quickly. And I think that's that's really cool uh, in the way that we're doing it. And that's a feature called Intelligent Recap. I think uh, Satya mentioned that in his keynote. I thought that, that yeah. sounded really cool. Yeah. Um, so mixing that with personalized meetings and now secure meetings. Um, I think what's really interesting about this is we've added some different features because one of the things that we hear a lot of is Teams is great if I want to set controls for, you know, I don't want meeting content to be shared, things like that. But what if you're one of these, imagine if you're physically going to do a meeting in a locked room, how do you do that in Teams? And Teams uh, Premium will do that for you. So the first thing you can do is you have a whole bunch of variables that you can set for the meeting. Things like it cannot be forwarded. Uh, only allow these people in that have these, uh, you know, specific names. Don't allow anybody to record. Even adding something as simple as a um, watermark on the screen, which if somebody takes a picture and shares it, you'll be able to trace it back to that meeting, to even a unique encryption code and code for that meeting that can't be duplicated. So in doing this, you're now controlling who's in the meeting, Mm -hmm. what they can do when they're in the meeting. You're restricting the ability to grab screenshots and downloads. And although you can't prevent someone from grabbing their phone, you now can know if it does get out, what meeting, be able to track it back and know where that happened. So, um, you know, this is just, you know, some of the few things that we've done, the ability to add appointments and to be able to track that through chats, all of this. And these are the great thing about Teams Premium is we're not taking anything away. We're not taking away translation and slide translation and transcription and all of that. Mm -hmm. If you do want to do a live translator, like you actually want to have somebody live translating, right. that you'll need Teams Premium for. But we're not taking anything away. We're really adding features to the product that not everybody needs. But those who do need it, it's going to be great for you because you're going to get those. And we're going to continue to add more features to the product um, that will really help you if you're looking for extra secure meetings. You're doing a lot of webinars or live events. Um, you're doing advanced webinars, or you really want that intelligence uh, within meetings to better help you balance your day. Okay. So uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, this isn't like a new version of Teams or a rewrite of Teams. Nope. This sits on top of the existing Teams, which is why you don't lose any features and adds right. those extra features like the personalization and the meeting summaries, and the extra security Ab features. Absolutely correct. So yeah, we're not taking anything away. Now, a few people have had some of these features to play with if they've been like a, a tap or, a, a, you know, one of our advanced customers, like you've been able to see and play with the live translation feature. That's something we will move into Teams Premium, but for the majority of our customers, there's nothing we're going to take away. People were freaking out that we were taking away the live translation where you can, uh, you and I are chatting right now. I could do the drop down and I could take everything you're saying and see it across my screen in any one of 28 languages. And wow. if we were showing slides, you can also click that slide if we were doing PowerPoint live and I can translate that into any one of those languages. So that's not going to go away. It's the live translation. It is the ability to create those custom templates and some of those, Oh, this is one other thing we're doing. And this is cool for it pros. You're going to be allowed to set meeting templates, meaning, you can say that every meeting that HR does has these types of security features already set up by default. So mm -hmm. all, all HR meetings, um, you know, it has to be someone with an address. They can't come in on a phone. They can't, um, you know, it has to be recorded, et cetera. Or while someone that maybe is in uh, engineering, it has to put that 
uh, water markup or things like that to protect your IP, while someone in sales doesn't really need that. So you can actually pick and choose the how restrictive or how not restrictive you want to make a meeting with meeting templates. And that's something which you can also, again, set up through Teams Premium. So if you have different levels of security needs in different parts of the country, this is really going to help you. Uh, that's very cool. Now, what about the folks that are not going to upgrade or add on Teams Premium? Are they getting new features as well? Absolutely. Um, we announced Excel Live. And for those familiar with PowerPoint Live, and let me just say this. If you are sharing any content in Teams, especially a PowerPoint, please use PowerPoint Live. There are three great reasons to do it if you're not doing it today. So when you're in PowerPoint, you're in a call, you're in a meeting, you'll see present in Teams. Click that. It's now coming to Excel. But what it does is it allows you to continue to see everybody in, on your call. It allows you to continue to see notes and people. What's great is you're now sharing the slide and you have complete control over the deck. So you can keep people from moving forward in the deck. You can use a highlighter. You can use a laser pen. Uh, you're able to see all of your speaker notes. If there's a URL, uh, people can click it in the slide and be that taken cool. right to that page. Yeah. We also now have a pop-out feature, content pop-out, where uh, as a viewer, if you're showing a slide deck and all that, I can actually pop that out into a separate window, put it in a separate monitor. So I'm just looking at the people in the meeting and not having to, uh, you know, and being able to see the content separately. Right. But we're bringing that same functionality to Excel. So what's great is if you're showing a spreadsheet, maybe, uh, you know, can, with conditional formatting and somebody wants to format it differently, each person can change the look and feel of that spreadsheet without affecting the original to make the content easier for them. So they can zoom in, they can filter, they can see just what they want to see without affecting everybody else's view. And we're looking to bring this to uh, some of our other apps as well. But in, in the old, finally, it also uses so much less bandwidth. If you're doing big screen share, mm -hmm. you're redrawing every pixel every time the screen refreshes. Mm -hmm. And with PowerPoint Live, you're only refreshing the, the bits that change. So it's much smaller and you're going to get a much better picture, much better sound. I didn't um, realize that. That's a yeah, that bonus that I don't even think about. It's like 20% of the bandwidth that you would normally use by doing a full screen share. Because think about it. You're redrawing, let's say you're 1096 by 1080. That's several Thousands, tens of thousands of pixels where you're really only redrawing 600 by 800, even though it's full screen and only the pixels that are changing when you do a slide. And if you're using a template, that's only a small amount of the slide. So it really makes a difference. Yeah. Um, we announced also something pretty cool called IntelliFrame. This is pretty, pretty cool. This is, this is for Teams rooms. So right now you can have a camera in the front of the room and cameras are great because, you know, it's going to see everybody at the table. But the problem is, you're just staring at a bunch of people at a table. You can't see everybody individually. So what we've added to Teams and using one of these new Smart Vision 360 cameras is you can put a 360 camera in the center of the table with the camera in the front. And what it will do is it, is, it will find everybody's face. And on the screen, you'll see your content, but you'll just see everybody's face. So whether you're it, at the conference table or working from home, everybody will look exactly the same at the bottom. So okay. everybody's equal and we can see who's speaking. We can see the impression on their face. So rather than each person turning on their own camera on their laptop, we can bring that individual aspect um, just through a combination of hardware and software, which is pretty cool for folks. So I think that's, that's really exciting. Uh, that is, exciting. is that, that, is that, Coming now, or is that announced for the future? Nope, that is coming now. So we already have uh, a device from Yealink out. Logitech has a device that's coming, and it will work with some of the 360 cameras out there because it's a combination of hardware and software technology. It's part of our uh, smart room technology. So those are just some of the many things. Uh, you can also now put work hours and location in your meetings uh, and on your calendar. And I like this because you can go to Outlook and you can say, hey, these are the days I'm going to be working from home, and these are the two days a week I'm in the office. Mm. And what's nice is if somebody goes to book time with me or wants to see, hey, I want to see David personally. I, don't, I just don't want to you know, be in the office, but I'd like to run into him. He's on my team. You know, I'd love to be able to casually catch up. I can take a look at your calendar, not only see your events, but also see what days you might be in the office. And I can oh. book time with you on that day and say, hey, let's meet physically or let's grab lunch. So that ability... 
to do work hours with location to have that hybrid presence is one of those things. Let's take a step back at a higher level. One of the things that we're continually hearing is we went from all being in person, which was great, to most of us all being at home. And that's worked really well for a lot of folks. But the thing that we missed was what I like to refer to as water cooler moments. Like when I happen to run into you at the restaurant and, hey, and we know Daniel Legan and we're friends and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Things like great that guy. happen when you run in. Yeah, when you run into people or bump into people. Oh, Daniel's not that great. He's, a, he's an asshole, but I'm just kidding. And we'll see if he's listening. That way he can go, I heard you called me a name. And we'll see if he does. I'll tell him to listen. Now, Daniel's great. And for those who don't know, Daniel Egan is a developer evangelist here at Microsoft, old friend of mine. Uh, we go way back, also knows David and uh, is a great human being and a very, very smart and nice person. So I have nothing negative to say about Daniel Egan uh, in public, in private, go off for hours. But. Uh, now he has to listen. Uh, <laughs> well, that was a good aside. I, uh, yeah, I like this no, idea absolutely. of the, uh, the, the schedule. It sounds like an integration with Outlook, what you just described there. It is. I, knows, uh, it, I can tell my calendar you know, where physically I am, which is great for me because I actually live really close to the Chicago office. And so mm -hmm. I stop in more often than most folks just because it's easier for me. And yeah. uh, uh, sometimes I see people there and sometimes I don't. It's just uh, most often not. You know, it's. Yeah. They and for me, I tend to go, I tend to go in on Thursday. So I put Thursday as my day in the office and people will look for that and say, oh, if he's in, that's an even better day. I'd love to meet face to face and I'll book a room and do this. But that was the thing was, you know, we went back to all working at home and that's great. And now we're kind of doing this hybrid thing. But the thing that we realize about working remotely is we're missing some of those moments. So some teams, some companies are saying, hey, we're going to make two days a week or we want you. What they've asked us is on the day that you, your team meeting, try to do it in person. So we make Thursdays at the day where we're all there in person. Mm -hmm. So for my team meeting, I get to see my teammates and then other folks who are looking to meet up with me, I'll go, Hey, I'm in on Thursdays and they can see that on my calendar. Vice versa. If I see a lot of folks that I want to try to sync up with or in on a day, I may come in also on a Tuesday because I know these folks are in and I want to grab lunch with them or grab time. So it's really making sure that if you go into the office, are you going to run into the people that you want to run into? You're not just there and it's an empty office and you're like, I commuted all the way in and I didn't gain anything by doing it. And gas is expensive and time is expensive. So, Absolutely. Um, so we can do that. Now, let me, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm curious. Sure. Um, so usually I don't let people ask me questions. That's my job. I appreciate but that. I'm going to make an exception your, today. <laughs> it's your own show and I'm, I'm bad. I'm a host myself, so I'm, I'm not can't always the best. <laughs> yeah, I can't help myself. But um, did you find, not because of traffic, but that you missed the commute in and out of the office? I'm going to just phrase it like that. Uh, so I actually, because I live so close, I usually just ride my bike to the office. So the commute okay. is pretty easy for me. And that's kind of a non-factor. Uh, what I missed was what you described earlier, just showing up and seeing people right. and having a brief but, touch point. But the commute itself, the actual drive into the office and back, did you miss it? Uh, no, I didn't miss that. And in fact, okay. when I, when I used to have to drive places, that's, uh, Chicago traffic, as you know, is awful. Oh no, I know. Yeah. No, it's horrible. I, I but what was interesting. Okay. So what was interesting for me was, yeah, I, I don't like the traffic and I tend to go in early and leave early from work, but I realized that 30 minutes for me to go into the office and coming home, I missed. I missed that 30 minutes in the car when I would be listening to NPR or saying, read my calendar and read my emails and go through stuff. And then coming home, because when I got into the office, I was ready to go. Wait, you were reading your and emails while you were driving home? Yeah, you safe. can do that. You can you can say Outlook, read my emails, and uh, it will okay. read Verbal. the emails to you. Now, I'm not okay. actually, I'm not driving a Tesla or anything like that. No, <laughs> but I, it'll read it to me, and I can go through that and get prepared for my day. And on the way home, I'd listen to music. And when I got home, work was done. The problem with just walking downstairs or walking upstairs is it's very hard for me, unless I sit in my office 20 minutes early and start to go through stuff, to have that wow, persona yeah. switch. Right. And I realized that that commute was that time for persona switch. So when I was home, I was home and work was done. And when I was getting ready to go in, I was gearing up. And I, I realized I missed that a little bit. And I don't know if it's uh, some people have said yes. Some people have said no. But I'm curious how folks looked at that. 
Uh, yeah, I guess I, I have experienced that. And when there isn't heavy traffic, then I can listen to a podcast or an audio book or something like yeah. that. And just a transition into, you know, non-work time. I, I, I do get that. And it is harder. You're right. If I, you know, transition to just me walking from this desk over to that couch over there. Right. It's, it's hard to suddenly just turn the switch off. It is hard. Yeah. So those are some of the bigger announcements. Uh, suggested replies and expanded reactions are part of it. And also now most folks should be getting um, the um, uh, avatars. So that's oh, something else that we're going to start to I've see. I've seen Hang people on. that have that in the preview. And I'm trying to figure out what the use case is for that other than just the coolness factor. I will share it with you. Let me see if I can turn on my avatar. Okay. So uh, uh, let's give it a try. So we'll we'll apply my avatar and we'll see how all this works. It works really well. Sometimes it's still early. We're just starting to release this. Will this um, be in the recording the, also? Oh, yeah. It'll be okay. in the recording. There you go. So you should be able to see me. And uh, I can I can give it a little like. I can <laughs> applaud. I um, hang on. Let's see. Uh, I don't have this feature yet. Are you... Okay. Uh, are you physically clapping your hands or are you clicking some button to tell it to clap? I'm clicking a button to do it. So okay. it will, as you can see, like my lips are moving. And, and that knows I, that you're speaking. So it's And it knows that I'm speaking. Okay. Yep. So we can see that, but I can even just, I can look confused. I can do a dab. I can do a little <laughs> double hand wave. I can say, <laughs> yep, Eureka. I can do a face palm. I like that one. A <laughs> uh, little fist bump. This is this. Now this one is my favorite. This is the flushed. Uh, one where I can go <laughs> and you can add backgrounds and stuff. I can do a slow nod. No, I can do a little peace bro, a uh, little fist bump. There's a lot. The, the folks went kind of crazy with it. I can do a little robot dance. I can do tears of joy. Look at that. Tears of joy. I'm so happy. Uh, I can say, where is everybody? Just look around. I can do a big yawn. Good for the morning or just, yeah, you're kind of boring me. And then when you're scaring me, I can just do a little yikes. So there you go. Um, and this is cute. Uh, where it really comes in and where we're seeing a lot around this is kind of two or three different areas. Uh, the first one being there are some school districts in the United States. Oh, I put on a background. I didn't. I That's very Perry Teams background. Um, there are some school districts in the United States where children uh, under the age of 18 are not allowed to have their camera on. And educators have said, hey, I'd really like to be able to see uh, that my students are present. Uh, so what that does is you have to be in front of the camera to see the avatar. And they can see that they're there, but they're not invading any privacy. It's great if someone doesn't feel comfortable on camera, but yet wants to participate within the meeting. There's a variety of spaces. And I think as we start to do more and more We'll see folks start to pick this up. It's not for everybody, but I think that there are great situations, especially when you're dealing with younger people, where this could be a really great way for folks to be able to show emotions or things like that, or where they're really respecting their privacy, where they could now be engaged in the meeting, be part of the meeting, have their camera on, but not have to show themselves or where they're living or where they're at. If you're in the middle of an airport, uh, but yet you want to be engaged. Turning on your camera is really distracting. Doing an avatar may make a lot more sense for somebody in a situation like that or on a bus or on a train or something like that. Um, there are just places or if you're in a place where you don't want to show your camera because of you know, you're in a conference room with stuff up on the walls and you're worried about somebody being able to see it. So there are times where that may make a lot of sense, but it does allow you to have a physical presence without having to turn on your camera. And I think we may see some industries really do this a lot. I could see this with help desk and answer desk, um, you know, where it's outsourced, but yet just a common avatar may feel more comfortable than that and be more personable than just having a chat back and forth. Very cool. Hey, we're, we're just about at time, but before we go, I do want to ask you about this. My show, yes. This is, your, this is a sock. Those are my socks. Tell me yes. about this sock. Those are, pro it's funny because um, I'm not allowed to use the team's logo. We don't use individual logos for teams and word. It's like, it's, uh, you know, Microsoft 365, the whole suite. So I went to my team and I'm like, hey, we can't use team socks because people really wanted them. Like, we should use your face and do a caricature. And I'm like, no, nobody, nobody needs to look at my face in any way, shape or form. So they convinced me to do the socks and the socks have been, I have people 
hitting me up on Twitter. I'm Stephen L. Rose on Twitter. And people are hitting me up on Twitter from all over the world saying, oh, my God, I saw your socks. I want your socks. How do I get your socks? And people <laughs> are nuts over them. They are well made. They're soft, which is great. But people go nuts. My favorite is a girl in um, somewhere in Africa happened to somehow get hold of a pair. She cut the toes off and she uses them as arm uh, warmers. <laughs> and she walks around with them and everybody's all jealous because she's going to school for <laughs> IT and they have the, you know, plan, deploy, manage, secure, adopt on it. And, and, uh, and, face. <laughs> and my big old mug for my show. So, yes. Matter of fact, here's what I'll do, David. I will send you um, five pairs of socks that you can give out to some of your viewers. I think I have some uh, some teams um, power bricks. So I'll get you some. You'll give me your address. And if folks that watch your show are excited and want the socks, you can send them some socks. I will hook you up, my friend. That is the best news I've heard today, Stephen. <laughs> See, that's what friends in technology do. <laughs> Stephen, thank you so much. I've learned a lot today. This was great, and I'm so glad that we met, and I'm happy to come on your show anytime folks want to talk about Teams or some of the new features. Uh, they can catch me, like I said, on my show. If you want to hit me up, hit me up on Twitter, Stephen L. Rose. It's the best way to grab a hold of me. So thanks, David. I'm happy that you and I have mutual friends in technology like Dan Ray.